Sayyid Ali Hosseini Khamenei Persian, Sid Li Sini Khanhe pronounced Ash Li Hosse Ni Kai Mean I Listen, born 17 July 1939 is a marja and the second and current supreme leader of Iran, in office since 1989. He was previously president of Iran from 1981 to 1989. Khamenei is the second longest serving head of state in the Middle East after Oman Sultan Qaboos, as well as the second longest serving Iranian leader of the last century, after Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. According to his official website, Khamenei was arrested six times before being sent into exile for three years during Mohammad Reza Pahlavi's reign. He was the target of an attempted assassination in June 1981 that paralyzed his right arm. Khamenei was one of Iran's leaders during the Iran Iraq War in the 1980s, and developed close ties with the now powerful Revolutionary Guards which he controls, and whose commanders are elected and dismissed by him. The Revolutionary Guards have been used to suppress opposition to him. Khamenei then went to serve as the third president of Iran from 1981 to 1989, while becoming a close ally of the first supreme leader, Ruhollah Khomeini. Eventually, after Khomeini had a disagreement with the then heir apparent Hussein Ali Mantazari, Akbar Hashemi Rafsanjani claimed that Khomeini had chosen Khamenei as his successor while the assembly of experts deliberated to elect the next supreme leader. After Khomeini's death, Khomeini was elected by the Assembly of Experts as the new Supreme Leader on 4 June 1989, at the age of 49. He has been head of the servants of Aston Quds Razavi since 14 April 1979. Today, as Supreme Leader, Khamenei is the head of state of Iran and the commander-in-chief of its armed forces. For this reason, he is considered the most powerful political authority in the country. As supreme leader, Khamenei can issue decrees and make the final decisions on the main policies of the government in many fields such as economy, the environment, foreign policy, and national planning in Iran. According to Karim Sajjadpour, Khamenei has either direct or indirect control over the executive, legislative and judicial branches of government, as well as the military and media. All candidates for the Assembly of Experts, the Presidency and the Majlis Parliament are vetted by the Guardian Council, whose members are selected directly or indirectly by the Supreme Leader of Iran. There have been also instances when the Guardian Council reversed its ban on particular people after being ordered to do so by Khamenei. There have been major protests during Khamenei's reign, including the 1994 Kazvin protests, the 1999 Iranian student protests, the 2009 Iranian presidential election protests, the 2011 12 Iranian protests, and the 2017 18 Iranian protests. Journalists, bloggers, and other individuals have been put on trial in Iran for the charge of insulting Supreme Leader Khamenei, often in conjunction with blasphemy charges. Their sentences have included lashing and jail time, and some of them have died in custody. Regarding the nuclear program of Iran, Ali Khamenei had issued a fatwa in 2003 saying that the production, stockpiling, and use of all kinds of weapons of mass destruction is forbidden. Early life and education Born to Sayyid Javad Khamenei, an Alim and Moitahid born in Najaf, and Khadija Murdamadi daughter of Hashim Murdamadi in Mashhad, Khamenei is the second of eight children. Two of his brothers are also clerics, his younger brother, Hadi Khamenei, is a newspaper editor and cleric. His elder sister Fatima Hosseini Khamenei died in 2015, aged 89. He has an ethnic Azerbaijani background on his father's side, with one source claiming that his mother was an ethnic Persian speaker from Yazd. Some of his ancestors are from Tafresh in today's Markazi province and migrated from their original home in Tafresh to Kamana near the Tabriz. Khamenei's great ancestor was Sayyid Hossein Tafreshi, a descendant of the Aftasi Sayyids, whose lineage supposedly reached to Sultan ul Ulama Ahmad, known as Sultan Sayyid, a grandchild of Shia fourth Imam, Ali ibn Husayn. Topic. Education His education began at the age of four, by learning Quran at Maktab. He spent his basic and advanced levels of seminary studies at the Haza of Mashhad, under mentors such as Sheikh Hashim Kazvini and Ayatollah Milani. Then, he went to Najaf in 1957, but soon returned to Mashhad due to his father's unwillingness to let him stay there. In 1958, he settled in Qam where he attended the classes of Sayyid Hossein Boraherdi and Ruhollah Khomeini. 
Like many other politically active clerics at the time, Khamenei was far more involved with politics than religious scholarship. Personal life Khamenei is married to Kojaste Bagarzada, with whom he has four sons Mustafa, Mojtaba, Masood, and Maysam and two daughters Bashra and Hoda. One of his sons, Mojtaba, married a daughter of Golam Ali Haddad Adil, according to Mehdi Kalaji, an Iran expert at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. Khamenei has a decent life, without it being luxurious. Robert Tate of The Telegraph notes that Khamenei is renowned for a Spartan lifestyle. Khamenei's official residence is the Beit Robbery Compound. According to The Telegraph, around 500 people are employed at the Beit Robbery Compound. Many recruited from the military and security services. Mother Nature Network published a picture of Khamenei exiting a BMW car, and noted that Khamenei has been seen riding around in a BMW. <laughs> health Khamenei's health has been called into question. In January 2007, after he had not been seen in public for some weeks, and had not appeared as he traditionally does at celebrations for Eid al-Adha, rumors spread of his illness or death. Khamenei issued a statement declaring that, "...enemies of the Islamic system fabricated various rumors about death and health to demoralize the Iranian nation." But according to author Human Majd, he appeared to be, "...visibly weak." In photos released with the statement, on 9 September 2014, Khamenei underwent prostate surgery in what his doctors described in state news media as a routine operation. According to a report by Le Figaro, Western intelligence sources said Khamenei has prostate cancer. <laughs> Political life and presidency Khamenei was a key figure in the Iranian Revolution in Iran and a close confidant of Ruhollah Khomeini. Since the founding of the Islamic Republic, Khamenei has held many government posts. 1979 founded the Islamic Republic Party, along with like-minded clerics such as Muhammad Beheshti, Muhammad Javad Bahanur, Abdul Karim Musavi Ardabili, and Akbar Hashemi Rafsanjani. 1980 Under Secretary of Defense 1980 – Supervisor of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps 1980 – Leader of the Friday Congregational Prayer 1980 – The Tehran Representative in the Consultative Assembly 1981 – Ayatollah Khomeini's Representative in the High Security Council 1981 – Elected President of the Islamic Republic of Iran after assassination of Muhammad Ali Rajai, and was re-elected to a second term in 1985. 1982 – Chairman of the High Council of Revolution Culture Affairs 1988 – President of the Expediency Discernment Council 1989 – Chairman of the Constitution Revisal Committee 1989 – Khamenei became the Supreme Leader of the Islamic Republic of Iran by choice of the Assembly of Experts. After the death of Ruhollah Khomeini, Mohammad Sahimi claims that his political career began after the Iranian Revolution, when the former President of Iran, Akbar Hashemi Rafsanjani, then a confidant of Khomeini, brought Khamenei into Khomeini's inner circle. Later on, the current President of Iran, Hassan Rouhani, then a member of parliament, arranged for Khamenei to get his first major post in the Provisional Revolutionary Government as Deputy Defense Minister. Khomeini appointed Khamenei to the post of Tehran's Friday Prayers Imam in 1980, after resignation of Hussein Ali Mantazari from the post. He served briefly as the Vice Minister of National Defense from late July to 6 November 1979 and as a supervisor of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards. He also went to the battlefield as a representative of the Defense Commission of the Parliament. <laughs> Assassination attempt Khamenei narrowly escaped an assassination attempt by the Mujahedin e Kalk when a bomb, concealed in a tape recorder, exploded beside him. On 27 June 1981, while Khamenei had returned from the front line, he went to the Abuzer Mosque according to his Saturday's schedule. After the first prayer, he began to give lecture to worshippers who had written their questions on the paper. 
Meanwhile, a tape recorder accompanied with papers was put on the desk in front of Common A by a young man who pressed a button. After a minute the loud speaker's sound become like whistle and suddenly the tape recorder exploded. A gift of Forkan Group to Islamic Republic. It was written on the inner wall of the tape recorder. Ayatollah Khamenei's treatment took several months and his arm, vocal cords and lungs were seriously injured. He was permanently injured, losing the use of his right arm. As president In 1981, after the assassination of Muhammad Ali Rajai, Khamenei was elected president of Iran by a landslide vote 97% in the Iranian presidential election, October 1981 in which only four candidates were approved by the Council of Guardians. Khamenei became the first cleric to serve in the office. Ruhollah Khomeini had originally wanted to keep clerics out of the presidency but later changed his views. Khamenei was re-elected in Iranian presidential election, 1985 where only three candidates were approved by the Council of Guardians, receiving 87% of the votes. The only Iranian presidential election that had fewer candidates approved by the Council of Guardians was the Iranian presidential election, 1989, where only two candidates were approved by the Council of Guardians to run, and Rafsanjani easily won 96% of the votes. In his presidential inaugural address Khamenei vowed to eliminate "...deviation, liberalism, and American-influenced leftists." According to the Iran Chamber, vigorous opposition to the government, including non-violent and violent protest, assassinations, guerrilla activity and insurrections, was answered by state repression and terror in the early 1980s, both before and during Khamenei's presidency. Thousands of rank-and-file members of insurgent groups were killed, often by revolutionary courts. By 1982, the government announced that the courts would be reined in, although various political groups continued to be repressed by the government in the first half of the 1980s. <laughs> Topic. During Iran–Iraq War Khamenei was one of Iran's leaders during the Iran–Iraq War in the 1980s, and developed close ties with the now powerful Revolutionary Guards. As president, he had a reputation of being deeply interested in the military, budget and administrative details. After the war In its 10 April 1997 ruling regarding the Mykonos restaurant assassinations, the German court issued an international arrest warrant for Iranian intelligence minister Hajat al-Islam Ali Falahan after declaring that the assassination had been ordered by him with knowledge of Khamenei and Rafsanjani. Iranian officials, however, have categorically denied their involvement. The then Iranian parliament speaker Ali Akbar Nat Nouri dismissed the ruling as being political, untrue and unsubstantiated. The ruling led to a diplomatic crisis between the governments of Iran and several European countries, which lasted until November 1997. Darabi and Rail were finally released from prison on 10 December 2007 and deported back to their home countries. <inaudible> <inaudible> Supreme Leader Khamenei has fired and reinstated presidential cabinet appointments. Iran's Chief Justice Sadiq Larijani, a Khamenei appointee, has warned the President of Iran against voicing opposition to Khamenei. Election as Supreme Leader Khamenei succeeded Ruhollah Khomeini after Khomeini's death, being elected as the new supreme leader by the Assembly of Experts on 4 June 1989. <laughs> <laughs> Leadership Council proposal Initially, the idea of Leadership Council was proposed by some members of Assembly of Experts. Various lists were proposed and Khamenei was named in all of them. For instance, a council of three members, Ali Meshkini, Musavi Ardabili and Khamenei, was proposed to lead Iran. According to Rafsanjani, he and Khamenei were against the proposal while Ayatollah Harry Shirazi and Ayatollah Ibrahim Amini were in favor of it. 
Supporters of the council proposal believed that having a council would produce a higher degree of unity in society and more positive characteristics would be found in a council, while the opposers believed that an individual leader was more efficient according to the past experiences in case of judiciary council. Ibrahim Amini listed the summary of reasons presented by the two sides. According to him the opposers rejected the proposal because, i. evidences for guardianship of the Islamic jurist were true only for the guardianship of an individual and it was not clear who held the guardianship when there was a council. Guardianship of a council was not rooted in hadiths and Islamic jurisprudence. E. Previous council-type organizations such as Broadcasting Council and Supreme Judicial Council were not successful in practice and Leadership Council would not do well for similar reasons. E. People were accustomed to the leadership of an individual and a council of leaders was something unfamiliar to them. I. V. An individual leader could act more decisive when dealing with critical and important decisions and solving problems and crisis. On the other hand, the supporters of the proposal believed that I. At the time, there were no faqi equal to Khomeini or even two or three levels lower than him so that he could fulfill the expectation of people. E. In case of council of leaders, the members could compensate each other, if any of them had some shortage in a field. Finally, 45 members voted against the leadership council proposal while more than 20 people were in favor of it and the proposal was rejected. After the assembly rejected the idea of a leadership council, Khamenei was elected leader by 60 of the 74 members present with Grand Ayatollah Muhammad Reza Golpegani receiving the remaining 14 votes. Though Khamenei opposed this and argued heavily against the decision, he eventually accepted it after debating with the Moitahids of the assembly. <laughs> Marja Iyyat criteria Since Khamenei was not a Marja at the time, which the Iranian constitution required, he was named as the temporary supreme leader. Later, the constitution was amended to remove that requirement and the assembly of experts reconvened on 6 August 1989, to reconfirm Khamenei with 60 votes out of 64 present. On 29 April 1989, responding to the letter of Ayatollah Meshkini, the head of committee responsible for revising the constitution, asking Khomeini's viewpoint regarding the Marja Iyyat criteria, Khomeini said. From the very beginning, I believed and insisted that there is no need for the requirements of Marja Iyyat authority in jurisprudence. A pious Moitahid jurist intellectual, who is approved by the esteemed assembly of experts Majlis I Kobregan, will suffice." In a video that surfaced during the 2017–18 Iranian protests, Khamenei is seen before the assembly saying he was not religiously qualified to be supreme leader. Khamenei, who was ranked as a Hujat al-Islam and not a Marja as required by the Iranian constitution, said he would only be a ceremonial leader, and was reassured by Akbar Hashemi Rafsanjani the position would be temporary, until a referendum, apparently planned for one year later. <laughs> Political philosophy and image Khamenei's era has differed from that of his predecessor. He has, however, continued Khomeini's policy of "...balancing one group against another, making sure that no single side gains too much power." But lacking Khomeini's charisma and clerical standing, he has developed personal networks, first inside the armed forces, and then among the clerics, while administering the major banyads and seminaries of Qam and Mashhad. According to Vali Nasser of the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, Khamenei took many of the powers of the presidency with him and turned the office of the supreme leader into the omnipotent overseer of Iran's political scene. In Nasser's view, Khamenei is an unusual sort of dictator. Officials under Khamenei influence the country's various powerful, and sometimes bickering, institutions, including the parliament, the presidency, the judiciary, the revolutionary guards, the military, the intelligence services, the police agencies, the clerical elite, the Friday prayer leaders and much of the media," as well as various, "...nongovernmental foundations, organizations, councils, seminaries and business groups." Khamenei issues decrees and makes the final decisions on economy, environment, foreign policy and everything else in Iran. Khamenei regularly meets with president, cabinet members, head and officials of the judiciary branch, parliamentarians, among others, and tells them what to do. 
Khamenei has also fired and reinstated presidential cabinet appointments. Khamenei meets with foreign dignitaries, however he does not travel overseas, if anyone wishes to see him, that person must travel to Iran. Apart from his time in Najaf as a student, Khamenei traveled to Libya during his time as president. In his speeches, Khamenei regularly mentions many familiar themes of the 1979 revolution justice, independence, self sufficiency, Islamic government, and resolute opposition to Israel and United States, while rarely mentioning other revolutionary ideals such as democracy and greater government transparency. According to Karim Sadjadpour of the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, Khamenei has resisted Rafsanjani's attempts to find a modus vivendi with the United States, Khatami's aspirations for a more democratic Islamic state, and Ermatinejad's penchant for outright confrontation. <laughs> Privatization of state-owned businesses In 2007, Khamenei called for the privatization of state-owned companies, including the telephone company, three banks and dozens of small oil and petrochemical enterprises. After a few months, at a televised meeting with then-President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and his cabinet ministers, important clerics, the leader of parliament and provincial governors, the heads of state broadcasting and the Iranian Chamber of Commerce, Khamenei ordered, to pass some laws, sell off some businesses, and be quick about it. Khamenei warned that those who are hostile to these policies are the ones who are going to lose their interests and influence. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Dispute regarding status as Grand Ayatollah. In 1994, after the death of Grand Ayatollah Muhammad Ali Araki, the Society of Seminary Teachers of Qam declared Khamenei a new marja. Several ayatollahs, however, declined to recognize him as such. Some of those dissidents' clerics included Muhammad Shirazi, Hossein Ali Mantazari, Hassan Tabatabai Komi, and Yasubuddin Rastigar Juibari. In 1997, for example, Mantazari questioned the powers of the leader and was subsequently punished for his comments with the closure of his religious school, an attack on his office in Qam, and a period of house arrest. Topic. Appointments The table below lists some of the incumbent senior officeholders in Iran directly appointed by the Supreme Leader sorted by date of appointment. Topic. Fatwas and messages Topic. Fatwa regarding companions of Muhammad In 2010, Khamenei issued a fatwa which bans any insult to the Sahaba companions of Muhammad as well as Muhammad's wives. The fatwa was issued in an effort to reconcile legal, social, and political disagreements between Sunni and Shia. Amman <laughs> message Khamenei is one of the ulama signatories of the Amman message, which gives a broad foundation for defining Muslim orthodoxy, as well as elaborating on the factors needed to create Islamic unity. He argues, neither the Shia Muslims allied with the British MI6 are Shias, nor the Sunni mercenaries of the American CIA are Sunnis, as they are both anti-Islamic. <laughs> Fatwa against nuclear weapons Khamenei has reportedly issued a fatwa saying the production, stockpiling, and use of nuclear weapons was forbidden under Islam. The fatwa was cited in an official statement by the Iranian government at an August 2005 meeting of the International Atomic Energy Agency (IAEA) in Vienna. It's been widely discussed by international officials and specifically recognized by the U.S. administration. The Iranian official website for information regarding its nuclear program has provided numerous instances of public statements by Khamenei wherein he voices his opposition to pursuit and development of nuclear weapons in moral, religious, and Islamic juridical terms. Khamenei's official website specifically cites a 2010 version of these statements in the fatwa section of the website in Farsi as a fatwa on. Prohibition of weapons of mass destruction. Doubts have been cast by experts on the existence of the fatwa as it can be changed or modified as and when deemed necessary, as well as doubts on its authenticity, its impact, and its apparently religious nature. 
Gareth Porter believes that the fatwa is sincere, and Golam Hossein Elam commented that it will not change. Topic: <laughs> Relationship with the press. In 2000, he was listed by the Committee to Protect Journalists as one of the top ten enemies of the press and freedom of expression, and was named to the Time 100 in 2007. Opposition journalists Ahmad Zaidabadi, Mohsen Sazagara, Mohamed Nurazad and Akbar Ganji were arrested and investigated for spreading critical articles containing unproven charges against Khamenei's policies as the leader and some organizations. According to the Iran's press law, Spreading rumors and lies and distorts the words of others is not allowed. Also, according to the law, spreading libel against officials, institutions, organizations, and individuals in the country or insulting legal or real persons who are lawfully respected, even by means of pictures or caricatures, is not allowed. Among his controversial actions were his rejection of a bill presented by the Iranian parliament in 2000 that aimed to reform the country's press law, and the disqualification of thousands of parliamentary candidates for the 2004 Iranian legislative election by the Guardian Council he appointed. In 2012, 2013, and 2014, Forbes selected Khamenei as the 21st, 23rd, and 19th most powerful person in the world, respectively, in the list of the world's most powerful people. Topic. Political power following reform era According to Karim Sadjadpour of the American Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, several factors have strengthened Khamenei in recent years. One, a vast network of commissars stationed in strategic posts throughout government bureaucracies, dedicated to enforcing his authority. Two, the weak, conservative-dominated parliament, headed by Khamenei loyalist Golam Ali Haddad Adil, whose daughter is married to the leader's son. Three, the rapidly rising political and economic influence of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards, whose top leaders are directly appointed by Khamenei and have always been publicly deferential to him. Four, the political disengagement of Iran's young population and five most significantly, the 2005 presidential election, which saw hardliner Mahmoud Ahmadinejad trounce Khamenei's chief rival, Hashemi Rafsanjani. According to Christopher Dickey, in order to consolidate his power base, Khamenei has developed close relations with the security and military establishment, while also expanding the bureaucracy inside the government and around his bait robbery compound. Financial assets Writing in The Telegraph, Damien McElroy and Ahmad Vadit observed, "...the Ayatollah likes to cultivate an image of austerity but receives major commissions from the Iranian oil and arms industries and there have been regular claims that he and his son have amassed a fortune running into billions of dollars." A six-month investigation by Reuters has said that Khamenei controls a "...financial empire." worth approximately $95 billion that is not overseen by the Iranian parliament, a figure much larger than the estimated wealth of the late Shah of Iran. According to the Reuters investigation, Khamenei uses the assets of a company called Headquarters for executing the order of the Imam or Seded in Farsi, in order to increase his grip on power. Reuters found no evidence that Khamenei is tapping Seded to enrich himself, but did find that he used Seded's funds, which rival the holdings of the Shah for political expedience. Sedid gives him the financial means to operate independently of parliament and the national budget, insulating him from Iran's messy factional infighting. According to The Telegraph, money from Sedid is used to fund Khamenei's bait robbery compound, which employs over 500 stewards, as was reported in 2013. Hamid Vazi, Sedid's head of public relations, said the information was far from realities and is not correct." The six-month investigation by Reuters into found that, regarding the source of Sedid's funds, "...Sedid built its empire on the systematic seizure of thousands of properties belonging to ordinary Iranians, members of religious minorities like vadit e hag who is Baha'i, as well as Shiite Muslims, business people and Iranians living abroad." Despite the negative accounts of Western sources, Iranian official sources depict Sedid as a vast charity foundation. 
In an interview in October 2014 with Islamic Republic News Agency, Muhammad Mukbar, the head of SETID, stated that over 90% of profits from SETID business activities are spent on improving infrastructure in the poor regions of the country, creating jobs and improving the well-being of people in these regions reflecting the top concerns of Iran's supreme leader, Khamenei for the Iranian society. He state that 85% of SETID's charitable works take place in poor regions of Iran. He cited construction of several hundred schools, mosques and hassanias, as well as direct and indirect contribution to formation of over 350,000 jobs expecting a total of 700,000 for the upcoming three years. Mukbar also cited a sum total grant of 2.21 trillion rials of Qar al-Hassan, interest-free loans, to 41,000 families in poor regions of the country. He also revealed plans of gradual sell-off of setted profitable businesses in the stock market with the aim of transferring their ownership into the hands of Iranian people. He also envisioned construction and delivery of 17,000 housing units to families in poor regions of Iran by 2018. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Protests during leadership. There have been several major protests during Khamenei's reign, including the 1994 Kazvin protests where, according to Al Arabiya, around 40 people were killed and over 400 were injured the 1999 Iranian student protests, the 2009 Iranian presidential election protests, when protesters chanted, Death to the dictator, and ripped down pictures of Khamenei, as well as the 2011 12 Iranian protests and 2017 18 Iranian protests, among others. In 2016, Khamenei, who outlines the election's guidelines, in line with Article 110 of Iran's constitution, asked to maximize the amount of transparency in elections in Iran, using modern technologies. <laughs> <laughs> Challenges following 2009 election protest In mid-August 2009, a group of unnamed former reformist lawmakers appealed to the Assembly of Experts, the constitutional body charged with electing and in theory, supervising and removing the leader, to investigate leader Ali Khamenei's qualification to rule. A week later another anonymous letter was issued, calling Iran's leader a dictator and demanding his removal. This won by a group of Iranian clerics. The letters were called a blow to Khamenei's status as a neutral arbiter and Islamic figurehead, and an unprecedented challenge to the country's most powerful man, though not a blow to his actual power as leader. The New York Times reports, the phrase death to Khamenei has begun appearing in graffiti on Tehran walls, a phrase that would have been almost unimaginable not long ago. The letter was addressed to the head of the Assembly of Experts, Ayatollah Akbar Hashemi Rafsanjani, a powerful former president, who also questions the election results. According to the Associate Press it is unlikely the letter's demands would be met as two-thirds of the 86-member assembly are considered strong loyalists of Khamenei and would oppose any investigation of him. According to the New York Times an 11-page anonymous letter by a group of Iranian clerics was issued 15 August, calling Iran's leader a dictator and demanding his removal. According to the New York Times, a prominent Iranian cleric and a former lawmaker said on Sunday that they had spoken to some of the authors and had no doubt the letter was genuine. According to this cleric, the letter's signatories number several dozen, and are mostly midranking figures from Qum, Isfahan and Mashhad. And that the pressure on clerics in Qum is much worse than the pressure on activists because the establishment is afraid that if they say anything they can turn the more traditional sectors of society against the regime. <laughs> Relations with former President Ahmadinejad Early in his presidency, Ahmadinejad was sometimes described as enjoy ing the full backing of the supreme leader Ali Khamenei, and even as being his protégé. In Ahmadinejad's 2005 inauguration the supreme leader allowed Ahmadinejad to kiss his hand and cheeks in what was called a sign of closeness and loyalty, and after the 2009 election fully endorsed Ahmadinejad against protesters. 
However, as early as January 2008 signs of disagreement between the two men developed over domestic policies, and by the period of 2010-11 several sources detected a «growing rift» between them. The disagreement was described as centered on Esfandiar Rahim Mashai, a top advisor and close confidant of Ahmadinejad and opponent of «greater involvement of clerics in politics», who was first vice president of Iran until being ordered to resign from the cabinet by the supreme leader. In 2009, Ahmadinejad dismissed Intelligence Minister Ghulam Hossein Mosini Ejai, an opponent of Mashai. In April 2011, another intelligence minister, Haider Moslehi, resigned after being asked to by Ahmadinejad, but was reinstated by the Supreme Leader within hours. Ahmadinejad declined to officially back Moslehi's reinstatement for two weeks and in protest engaged in an 11 day walkout of cabinet meetings, religious ceremonies, and other official functions. Ermadinejad's actions led to angry public attacks by clerics, parliamentarians and military commanders, who accused him of ignoring orders from the supreme leader. Conservative opponents in parliament launched an impeachment drive against him. Four websites with ties to Ahmadinejad reportedly were filtered and blocked, and several people said to be close to the president and Mashai such as Abbas Amarifar and Muhammad Sharif Malekzada were arrested on charges of being magicians and invoking the jinns on the 6th of may 2011 it was reported that ahmadinejad had been given an ultimatum to accept the leader's intervention or resign and on the 8th of may he apparently bowed to the reinstatement welcoming back moslehi to a cabinet meeting the events have been said to have humiliated and weakened Ahmadinejad, though the president denied that there had been any rift between the two, and according to the semi-official FAS news agency, he stated that his relationship with the supreme leader is that of a father and a son. In 2012, Khamenei ordered a halt to a parliamentary inquiry into Ahmadinejad's mishandling of the Iranian economy. In 2016, Khamenei advised Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, his former ally with whom his relationship was strained after Ahmadinejad accused his son Mojtaba Khamenei of embezzling from the state treasury, to not run for president again. <laughs> <laughs> Domestic policy Khamenei is regarded by some as the figurehead of the country's conservative establishment. Khamenei supported Mezbah Yazdi, describing him as one of Iran's most credible ideologues prior to the 2005 election, but has reportedly recently been concerned about Mezbah's political ambitions. In 2007, Khamenei requested that government officials speed up Iran's move towards economic privatization. Its last move towards such a goal was in 2004, when Article 44 of the Constitution was overturned. Article 44 had decreed that Iran's core infrastructure should remain state-run. Khamenei also suggested that ownership rights should be protected in courts set up by the Justice Ministry. The hope was that this new protection would give a measure of security to and encourage private investment. In 2007, Iranian police under the direction of Khamenei launched a public security plan arresting dozens of thugs to increase public security additionally Khamenei has stated that he believes in the importance of nuclear technology for civilian purposes because oil and gas reserves cannot last forever on the 30th of april 2008 ali khamenei backed president ermadinejad's economic policy and said the west was struggling with more economic difficulties than iran with a crisis spreading from the United States to Europe, and inflation was a widespread problem. The Iranian leader said that the ongoing economic crisis which has crippled the world has been unprecedented in the past 60 years. This crisis has forced the UN to declare state of emergency for food shortages around the globe but foreign radios have focused on Iran to imply that the current price hikes and inflation in the country are the results of carelessness on the part of Iranian officials which of course is not true. He said. Khamenei emphasized that no one has the right to blame the Iranian government for Iran's economic problems. He also advised people and the government to be content and avoid waste in order to solve economic problems. I advise you to keep in your mind that this great nation is never afraid of economic sanctions. He added. Topic. Science and technology Ali Khamenei has been supportive of scientific progress in Iran. 
He was among the first Islamic clerics to allow stem cell research and therapeutic cloning. In 2004, Khamenei said that the country's progress is dependent on investment in the field of science and technology. He also said that attaching a high status to scholars and scientists in society would help talents to flourish and science and technology to become domesticated, thus ensuring the country's progress and development. Minorities The Baha'i Faith is the largest religious minority in Iran, with around 300,000 members, 8 million members worldwide, and is officially considered a dangerous cult by Iranian government. It is banned in Iran and several other countries. Khamenei has approved new legislation against Baha'is in Iran and lessen their influence abroad. According to a letter from the chairman of the command headquarters of the armed forces in Iran addressed to the Ministry of Information, the Revolutionary Guard, and the police force, Khamenei has also ordered the command headquarters to identify people who adhere to the Baha'i Faith and to monitor their activities and gather any and all information about the members of the Baha'i Faith. <laughs> Trials of people for insulting Khamenei Several journalists, bloggers, and other individuals were put on trial in Iran for the charge of insulting the supreme leader, often in conjunction with blasphemy charges. In 1996, Abbas Marufi was sentenced to 35 lashes and six months' imprisonment for spreading lies and insulting Khamenei. Marufi was also banned from working as a journalist and his literary monthly Gardun was closed. Marufi had compared Khamenei to former Shah of Iran Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. In 2005, an Iranian was jailed for two years for insulting Khamenei and Imam Khomeini while being cleared of insulting the Prophet. In 2009, Iranian blogger Omid Reza Mir Sayafi, who was arrested for insulting Khamenei in an internet post, died while in custody in Evin prison. In 2010, opposition activist Ahmad Gabel was sentenced to 20 months in jail for insulting Khamenei, as well as three additional years for possessing a satellite receiver, a three-year exile and a fine. In 2014, eight men including a Briton were sentenced for 19 to 20 years for insulting Khamenei and other charges relating to Facebook comments. In 2017, Sina Degan was sentenced to death for insulting the Prophet, with an additional 16-month sentence for insulting Khamenei in a messaging application. Interpretation of Islamic law In 2000, Ali Khamenei sent a letter to the Iranian parliament forbidding the legislature from debating a revision of the Iranian press law. He wrote, "...the present press law has succeeded to a point in preventing this big plague. The draft bill is not legitimate and in the interests of the system and the revolution." His use of "...extra legislative power," has been criticized widely by reformists and opposition groups. In reaction to the letter, some parliament members voiced outrage and threatened to resign. Kayan and Jomyori Yi Islami are two newspapers published under the management of Khamenei. In late 1996, following a fatwa by Khamenei stating that music education corrupts the minds of young children, many music schools were closed and music instruction to children under the age of 16 was banned by public establishments, although private instruction continued. Khamenei stated, the promotion of music both traditional and western in schools is contrary to the goals and teachings of Islam regardless of age and level of study In 1999 Khamenei issued a fatwa stating that it was permitted to use a third party donor sperm ova or surrogacy in fertility treatments This was different in both style and substance to the fatwa on art by Gad el Haq Ali Gad el Haq of Egypt's Al Azhar University in the late 1980s, which permitted art IVF and similar technologies as long there is no third party donation of sperm, eggs, embryos, or uteruses. In 2002, he ruled that human stem cell research was permissible under Islam, with the condition that it be used to create only parts as opposed to a whole human. In 2002, after protests erupted in the capital, Khamenei intervened against the death sentence given to Hashim Ag Agajari for arguing that Muslims should reinterpret Islam rather than blindly follow leaders. Khamenei ordered a review of the sentence against Agajari and it was later commuted to a prison sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Women's rights 
In July 2007, Khamenei criticized Iranian women's rights activists and the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women In our country, some activist women, and some men, have been trying to play with Islamic rules in order to match international conventions related to women," Khamenei said. This is wrong. Khamenei made these comments two days after Iranian women's rights activist Delaram Ali was sentenced to 34 months of jail and 10 lashes by Iran's judiciary. Khamenei is an advocate of Islamic practice of hijab. He believes that hijab is aimed at honoring women. To the Western objection to the compulsory hijab in Iran, he responds by pointing out the compulsory unveiling in certain Western countries and obstacles created for veiled Muslim women who want to enter universities. He further argues that women in the West have lost their honor by pointing out perceived high rate of sexual violence in the West as well as the widespread exploitation of female sexual appeal for commercial purposes. In effect, they have been treating women like a commodity, like another of their products. If you were to look at the magazines, which are published in the West, you would see that they advertise a commodity for sale next to the naked picture of a woman. Can you imagine a bigger insult to women? They the West must be answerable, not Islam. Ali Khamenei believes in gender segregation. Khamenei also believes that gender equality is a Zionist plot with the purpose to corrupt the role of women in society. Khamenei argues that today, homosexuality is a major problem in the Western world. They Western nations, however, ignore it. But the reality is that homosexuality has become a serious challenge, pain, and unsolvable problem for the intellectuals in the West. Topic. Presidential, parliamentary, and assembly of experts elections As supreme leader, Khamenei has influence over elections in Iran since the Constitution of Iran allows him to appoint half of the members of the Guardian Council and the Chief Justice of Iran. The Constitution also establishes that the Council approves or disqualifies candidates for office while the Chief Justice presents the other half of the members of the Council to be selected by Parliament. These constitutional provisions give Khamenei direct and indirect influence over the council, an entity that, in turn, has direct influence over who can run for government. This influence was evident in the 2004 parliamentary elections, in which the Guardian Council disqualified thousands of candidates from running—including 80 incumbents, many of the reformist members of parliament, and all the candidates of the Islamic Iran Participation Front Party. Subsequently, the Conservatives won about 70% of parliamentary seats. The election became a key turning point in the country's political evolution as it marked the end of the campaign for political and social reform initiated by former President Mohamed Khatami. During the 2005 presidential election, Khamenei's comments about importance of fighting corruption, being faithful to the ideals of the Islamic Revolution, as well as on the superior intelligence and dynamism of those who studied engineering, were interpreted by some as a subtle endorsement of Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, who had a PhD in traffic engineering. After the election, and until recently, Khamenei was outspoken in his support for Ahmadinejad, and defended him publicly in ways which he never had reformist President Khatami. Khamenei would later certify the results of the 2009 Iranian presidential election. Khamenei took a firm stand against the 2009 10 Iranian election protests, and stated that he will neither reconsider vote results nor bow to public pressure over the disputed re election of President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. By Allah's favor, the presidential election was accurately held, and the current matters should be pursued legally. In a public appearance on 19 June he expresses his support for the declared winner Ahmadinejad and accused foreign powers—including Britain, Israel and the United States—of helping foment protest against the election results. In particular, he singled out Britain, perceiving the country as the most evil of its enemies. He said that the Iranian people will respond with an iron fist if Western powers meddle in Iran's internal affairs. In response to reformist gains in the 2015 2016 election cycle, Khamenei lamented the loss of conservative clerics from the Assembly of Experts and suggested changes to the law by which the Guardian Council vets candidates may be needed because it is currently too difficult for the Guardian Council to vet so large a number of candidates. Human rights 
Khamenei has called human rights a fundamental principle underlying Islamic teachings, that precedes Western concern for human rights by many centuries. He has attacked Western powers who have criticized the rights record of the Islamic Republic for hypocrisy saying that these countries economically oppress people in third world countries and support despots and dictators. In response to Western complaints of human rights abuses in Iran he has stated that the American administration has committed many crimes and is therefore not fit to judge the Islamic Republic. <laughs> <laughs> Foreign policy Khamenei has direct responsibility for foreign policy, which cannot be conducted without his direct involvement and approval. He has a foreign policy team independent of the president's, which includes two former foreign ministers, and can at any time of his choosing inject himself into the process and correct a flawed policy or decision. His foreign policy is said to steer a course that avoids either confrontation or accommodation with the West. Khamenei condemned the Saudi Arabian led intervention in Yemen and compared Saudi Arabia to Israel. Khamenei condemned the persecution of Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar and called Myanmar's de facto leader and Nobel Peace Prize laureate Aung San Suu Kyi a brutal woman. Opposition to United States foreign policy On 4 June 2006, Khamenei said that Iran would disrupt energy shipments from the Persian Gulf region about 20% of the world's daily supply of oil passes from the Persian Gulf through the Strait of Hormuz very close to Iran's coast should the country come under attack from the U.S., insisting that Tehran will not give up its right to produce nuclear fuel. On 14 September 2007, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei on the first Friday prayer of Ramadan predicted that George W. Bush and American officials will one day be tried in an international criminal court to be held accountable for the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq. He has also blamed the United States for blind terrorism after its invasion of Iraq. He asserts that the United States is the main cause of insecurity in Iraq. On 21 March 2009, a day after U.S. President Barack Obama claimed to offer Iran a new beginning of diplomatic engagement between the two old foes, Khamenei said a change of U.S. words was not enough and added, We will watch and we will judge the new U.S. administration. You change, our behavior will change. In June 2011, Khamenei accused the United States government of terrorism and rejected the American definition of terrorism. He was quoted as saying, The U.S. and the European governments that follow it describe Palestinian combatant groups who fight for the liberation of their land as terrorists. In June 2012, Khamenei warned Western governments that the mounting sanctions on the country will only deepen the Iranians' hatred of the West. In October 2014, Khamenei said the US and the UK created ISIS as a tool to fight Iran and create insecurity in the region. On 19 July 2015, while speaking at a mosque in Tehran, Khamenei said to his supporters that the policies of the United States in the region were 180 degrees. Opposed to Iran's political and religious movement. The speech was punctuated by chants of death to America and death to Israel. Khamenei said in regards to the 2015 nuclear deal that even after this deal our policy towards the arrogant U.S. will not change. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said that if the comments reflected policy, it was very disturbing and very troubling. Condemnation of the 11th of September attacks After the September 11 attacks, Khamenei condemned the act and the attackers and called for a condemnation of terrorist activities all over the world, but warned strongly against a military intervention in Afghanistan. He is quoted as saying, mass killings of human beings are catastrophic acts which are condemned wherever they may happen and whoever the perpetrators and the victims may be. Topic. Zionism and Israel Khamenei is an opponent of the State of Israel and Zionism, and has been criticized for anti-Semitic rhetoric and for making threats against Israel. On 15 December 2000, Khamenei called Israel a 
cancerous tumor of a state that should be removed from the region, and in 2013 called Israel a rabid dog, as well as in 2014 during the Gaza War, for what he called attacking innocent people. In 2014 a tweet, from an account attributed to Khamenei, claimed that there was no cure for Israel but its annihilation. In a September 2008 sermon for Friday prayers in Tehran, Khamenei stated that, It is incorrect, irrational, pointless and nonsense to say that we are friends of Israeli people, because he believed that the occupation is done by the means of them. Usurpation of houses, lands, and business of Palestinian people are carried out using these people. They are the background actors of Zionist elements," said Khamenei in his speech. We have no problem with Jews and Christians. We have problem with the usurpers of Palestine land," he added. Also, he said that he had raised the issue, "...to spell an end to any debates." In 2013, Khamenei accused France of "...kneeling," before Israel, while saying that Israel was led by people unworthy of the title human. Nevertheless, according to anti-regime change activist Abbas Edelot, in 2005 Khamenei responded to a remark by then-President Ahmadinejad which had been widely translated as saying that the regime occupying Jerusalem should be wiped off the map, by saying that the Islamic Republic has never threatened and will never threaten any country. In a September 2009 sermon, Khamenei was quoted as saying, that the Zionist cancer is gnawing into the lives of Islamic nations." In another report of the same speech, he added that, "...we will support and help any nations, any groups fighting against the Zionist regime across the world, and we are not afraid of declaring this." Khamenei instead proposed that, "...Palestinian refugees should return and Muslims, Christians and Jews could choose a government for themselves, excluding immigrant Jews." Adding, no one will allow a bunch of thugs, lechers and outcasts from London, America and Moscow to rule over the Palestinians." On 10 September 2015, in a speech about Israel after agreement on the nuclear program of Iran, Khamenei made a remark, "...Israel will not exist in 25 years." For the first time, the remark was published in Khamenei's official website and his Twitter. This statement was reported as voted as the best and most important among Khamenei's statements in 2015 by an online poll conducted by his official website. On 21 February, at the 6th International Conference in support of the Palestinian Intifada, Khamenei regarded withdrawal of Israel from South Lebanon in 2000 and from Gaza in 2005 as two major achievements so far. Also, he advised the Islamic countries to refrain from useless crises and differences and instead concentrate on the issue of Palestine which he regarded as the core issue of Islam. Otherwise, the potentials and capabilities of the nations will go to waste in the face of vain struggles, which would provide opportunities for the Zionist regime to become even stronger," he added. <laughs> Questioning of the Holocaust on 21 March 2014, Khamenei used a morning speech marking Nowruz, the Persian New Year, to call into question the Holocaust. He said, The Holocaust is an event whose reality is uncertain and if it has happened, it's uncertain how it has happened. <laughs> <laughs> Literature and art Interested in the study of the novels and stories since childhood, Khamenei has studied various world's credible novels. He was "...fascinated by Jean-Paul Sartre and Bertrand Russell." In his youth, he praised the works of Mikhail Sholokhov, Alexei Tolstoy, Honoré de Balzac, and Michel Zevaco. However, Victor Hugo's works are the best in his view. In my opinion, Victor Hugo's Les Miserables is the best novel that has been written in history. I have not read all the novels written throughout history, no doubt, but I have read many that relate to the events of various centuries. I have read some very old novels. For example, say, I've read The Divine Comedy. I have read Amir Arsalan. I have also read A Thousand and One Nights. But Les Miserables is a miracle in the world of novel writing. I have said over and over again, go read Les Miserables once. 
This Les Miserables is a book of sociology, a book of history, a book of criticism, a divine book, a book of love and feeling. He suggested reading The Grapes of Wrath to an audience of writers and artists, and Uncle Tom's Cabin to the high-level state managers as he thought as shed light on the history of United States. Isn't this the government that massacred the original native inhabitants of the land of America? That wiped out the American Indians? Today, one of the most tragic works of art is Uncle Tom's Cabin. This book still lives after almost 200 years, Khamenei said. Khamenei is fluent in Arabic in addition to his native languages, Persian and Azerbaijani. He has translated several books into Persian from Arabic, including the works of the famous Egyptian theoretician Said Qutb. He speaks Azerbaijani, his father's native language. When it comes to poetry, in Mashhad he used to participate in the literary associations along with known poets and used to critique poems. Writing some poems himself, he chose pseudonym Ammon for himself. In the field of music, he's known to have a good singing voice and plays the tar, a traditional Iranian stringed instrument. <laughs> Public diplomacy Topic: Islamic Awakening. In February 2011, Ali Khamenei supported the Egyptian uprising against their government, describing it as Islamic Awakening instead of Arab Spring. Trying to communicate with Arab people, he addressed Egypt's protesters in Arabic. Iranians are not Arabs, and Iran's official language is Persian. He introduced himself as "Your brother in religion," while praising the explosion of sacred anger. Later, in Islamic Awakening Conferences, which were held in Tehran, Khamenei praised the Muslim youths of Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Yemen and Bahrain for what he described as Islamic Awakening. He also paralleled these events with Islamic Revolution in Iran during his Nowruz oration in 2011. However, major protests against the Iranian regime also broke out throughout Iran in 2011, and they became known as the 2011-12 Iranian protests. Works Four main books of Rigel The Outline of Islamic Thoughts in the Quran Honest Leader Discourse on Patience Translation by Sayyid Hussein Alamdar available online Iqbal, Manifestation of the Islamic Spirit Two Contemporary Muslim Views ISBN 1-871031-20-6 Iqbal, the poet philosopher of Islamic resurgence, is one of the two contemporary Muslim views. The other one is Ali Shariati's. Replies to inquiries about the practical laws of Islam. ISBN 964 472 0 8 PDF version. Lessons from the Najul Balaga. Human rights in Islam. The Charter of Freedom. Essence of Tawhid, Denial of Servitude but to God Translations from Arabic Future in the Realm of Islam See also List of national leaders List of current Miraji The 250 years old man To the youth in Europe and North America Letter Khamenei's Fatwa Against Nuclear Weapons Palestine 2011 book equals equals footnotes